Hi everyone, I'm Michelle Kelly. Welcome to Be In The Change. I'm gonna get started by reciting my inspiration. Our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, which most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. The plain small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people will not feel insecure around you. <clears throat> Excuse me. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us. It is in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Marianne Williamson. I'd like to say welcome to everybody who's watching me for the first time and welcome back and thank you to everybody who's been following me on this journey since 2019 where I stated for my New Year's resolution that I was breaking up with fear I was breaking up with shame and I was breaking up with guilt. 2020 was to be kinder and more compassionate to myself and others. 2021 was to break up with processed sugar, which you guys, that was so hard to do. And 2022 is to attach an income to, to what it is that I'm doing or do, which still has not happened yet. So, Thank you to everybody who's watching me figure this out because this has been a long, hard road and process. And I've been telling you guys, the breaking up with fear, shame, and guilt, like when I said that out loud, first of all, I had no idea that was going to come out of my mouth. And then I had no idea what that was going to look like. And I reported back to you that fear, shame, and guilt wasn't breaking up with me the way that, that I thought it was. And it's been a process. And you guys, not that I don't have fear, not that things don't scare me. However, I can feel the fear and do it anyway. And that is huge because, you know, I grew up in a house where I learned to not talk. Um, I learned it wasn't worth it to say what I wanted to say or what I needed to say. And I learned how to shut down. So, um, I've always been a talker, but when I was growing up, they're like, shut up, Michelle, nobody wants to hear what you have to say. And so I just associated that no one wanted to hear what I had to say, not just the people that I lived with. And so I, you know, took that with me into adulthood. And what I found out is it wasn't true. People did want to hear what I had to say. Not necessarily the people that I was related to, but other people wanted to hear what I had to say. And that, that helped me get my voice back. So last week I was talking to you guys about, you know, abortion and how I had one when I was 17 and I know I know a lot of people who have had them too who aren't able to talk about it yet and you know what I keep realizing about this world and I have done a lot of emotional work in fact I have not come across anyone that has done the amount of emotional work on themselves that I have yet doesn't mean they haven't. I just haven't come across them yet. So if you're out there, please contact me because this is a hard road. But um, what I've realized is the entire world is being run exactly like the house I grew up in. And once I figured that out, I, I can see what's happening and I know what's going to happen and I know it's how it's, how it's happening. And, um, because I lived it. And I feel like, you know, we're all on this road of trying to do better, trying to be better. Not everybody's going to be able 
to do things the way that you think that they should. And I used to go around trying to get other people to do things the way I thought they should instead of how they did, which is the same thing that happened to me. I was doing the same thing to others, but I couldn't see it. All I could see is what everybody else did to me and how they wronged me and how they personally affected me. And it wasn't until I got into 12 step recovery programs. I'm in three 12 step programs. And let me tell you, I didn't want to be in any of them. And I'm now grateful to be in all of them because it is a road um, and tools of how not to self-sabotage, how to accept yourself and how to get a connection to a higher power, to God, to something other than yourself. So, um, I have all these amazing tools, which is such a gift. And I realize most people don't have the tools that I have. And it's okay that you don't have them. We get them as we go and we get them when we need them. So one of the things I wanted to share with you guys today is, you know, I always blamed other people for how they wronged me, what they did to me. And I never looked at, and it's not I never looked at, I wasn't able to look at, did I ever do that to anybody else? And I couldn't do that for a really long time and most people can't do it. And it's not they won't do it, they can't. Because when you don't have the tools to do this, you can't. And unless people tell you and show you and help you, it's really hard to do it on your own and to be consistent. So what I've learned is <clears throat> I had epiphanies and moments where things where I'm like, oh my God, and I was sharing today in a meeting that I can tell you guys what I share in meetings because I am the same wherever you see me. I can show you who I am now because I know who I am. So I'm not afraid of people seeing me or hearing me or knowing about me because I know me. But one of the things that happened and it was, I went to Texas years ago to go visit my brother and, and my sister-in-law. And when I went there, my mom, who I told you guys, I don't have a relationship with my mom and I don't speak to her. However, she left a present for me at the house, at my brother's house. And my brother's ex-wife said to me, your mom left you a present, do you want it? And I said, no. And then she said, don't you wanna see what it is? And I said, no, thank you. And then she's like, don't you just wanna open it? And I said, no, you can have it, you can open it, you can do whatever you want with it, but no, I don't want to. And she proceeded to open it, she proceeded to take it out of the box. And I said, you can donate it, you can do it do whatever you want with it. Um, however, I didn't get mad. And what I thought about is, did I ever do this to anybody else? And I did. I did it all the time. I did it to my son, Angelo. You guys, when I did this stuff, I didn't know that when people talked to me, I wasn't listening. I heard them, but I wasn't listening. And one of the biggest examples I can give with my son, Angelo, how I used to do this all the time was he would wake up and I would say, do you want breakfast? And he'd say, mom, I'm not hungry. And I'd say, how about some waffles? How about I make you some waffles? And he's like, I'm not hungry. I don't want waffles. I'm like, okay, how about eggs? I can make you eggs. And he's like, mom, I'm not hungry. And I'd be like, how about a Pop-Tart? I can get you a Pop-Tart. So the same thing that I would have normally accused my sister-in-law of doing, I did too. But it was so much easier to see how everybody else did it to me instead of I did the same thing that I accused everybody else of doing. So seeing where people are in their lives and how they do things and when I go somewhere and I can tell the person is listening, but they can't hear me, I realize I used to be there too. And if people didn't come into my life to help me, to show me, 
were to think that I was worth it, I'd still be doing the same things too. So I've been given the gift of grace. And as I've been given this gift of grace, I can extend it to others, but I wasn't able to extend it to anyone until I was able to extend it to myself first. So as we're in this world of everybody pointing the finger, accusing you did this, she did this, he did this, it's like growing up in my family and it doesn't work. It makes people want to run. It makes people get defensive. It makes people shut down. And how do I know this? Because I did it. So I've learned to speak with people with love and with kindness. And guess what I get met with every single place that I go? Love and kindness. It's like, I can't even describe it. But even though I'm in a time in my life where I'm on social security disability, I'm on food stamps, I get help with my electric, I, I get all of these amazing um, gifts right now. And every person who I've talked to, who has helped me, who has been able to help me, no judgment and love and kindness. And I can't believe it but I can believe it because that's what I'm able to give. And when I give that, I get that back. So um, I never realized that most people were reflecting back to me what I was giving them. So I just wanna say thank you to everyone who's watching. Please stay tuned, stay safe. I will see you all next week. This is your sign signing off.